to change my life this year. Oh, you too? <laughs> Let's do it together. By the way, it's pretty cold out here. Do you mind if we continue this inside? Okay, great. Okay, much better. <laughs> I'm on vacation in Northern Sweden with my boyfriend right now and it's just really cold. <laughs> it's my first time back in Sweden since I quit my engineering job in Sweden about six months ago and moved to the Netherlands. It feels great to be back and it also reminds me how much I've changed my life this past year. And this year I'm gonna change my entire life again. I'm gonna move again, start a completely new job and also start a new direction for this channel. And whenever I feel uncertain or uninspired, I like to turn to books for guidance and inspiration. So I want to share the six books that have helped me the most so far in figuring out what I want to do next and getting the courage to go for it so that they can keep both you and me company as we change our lives this year. I picked six books because we're not trying to rush things this year. We're allowing things to take the time they need. And yes, I've brought these books all the way from the Netherlands to Sweden. That's how important they are to me. The first big change I'm making this year is starting my new job in two weeks. And the longer I'm building my career, the more I realize that it's all in my own hands. Choosing to study mechanical engineering now almost 10 years ago was only the first of many decisions I get to make about my career. And the best career guide by far that I found is 80,000 hours by Benjamin Todd. It's written for people who want to make an impact with their career, but are not sure what's the best way to do that. It really talks you through like, okay, what are your different options for making an impact and which one could be a good fit for you? And what are smart priorities to set at different stages of your career? For example, when you're early in your career, you want to focus on building as much career capital as possible, which are transferable skills and relationships that will continue to help your career, even as the world keeps changing. I have to change something. I have to get out of the sun. <laughs> this book helped me immensely with my most recent career decision, where I decided that my priority right now is to learn as much as possible from experienced people and to get to know lots of different industries and companies. Whereas before, I was also learning a lot from working as an engineer at a startup, but I was mostly learning by doing, figuring things out along the way by myself and there weren't really any very experienced people to mentor me. Your next career decision might look completely different and the same actually goes for my future career decisions. Yet I think this book will still help because it provides guidelines to take these decisions and helps you think through all your options systematically. Now I actually need to leave to go to a really beautiful place, but you know what? I'll just take you along for the ride. Doesn't just stay a dream. 
and I want to make sure I find a good balance between saving for the future but also enjoying life right now. So that's where this book comes in. The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel. It's not your typical personal finance book. Rather than talking about specific numbers or financial products, it's about the soft skills that you need to be financially successful. It's also not focused on being as rational as possible and optimizing your money to the last cent. It's not even about making more money. Instead, it's about finding a reasonable way to deal with our money, making sure we don't lose money on stupid things and managing our money in a way that helps us sleep at night. If you want to change your relationship with money this year because you feel insecure about the way you deal with money, or you could have a lot of hidden beliefs about money that get in your way, or if you're unhappy with your current financial situation and want to improve it this year, then this is an amazing book to read and I'm surely gonna be rereading it this year. One thing I've been thinking about a lot lately is just how much we have our life in our own hands. I mentioned this a bit earlier when I talked about career planning, but I think it's much bigger than that. Of course, we don't have complete control and I also don't think that's desirable, but we do have a lot of power to steer, but only if we realize that there's a steering wheel. Look at that, that's the largest waterfall in Sweden. Thank you. Now the difficult thing once you start to question your path is to recognize what you actually want and what you just think you should want because other people seem to want it. You don't want to reject something just because other people also want it. But you also don't want to pursue something just because other people also want it. Now, I felt this the most when it comes to my career because every colleague and every manager I talk to has an opinion about what I should want, what I should go after. In engineering, where I've been working, it's all about getting as much hands-on experience as possible for preferably years or even a decade, and then eventually becoming a specialist and then an engineering manager. And that's also the path that I was supposed to be on before I changed everything. But at some point I realized, no matter how great this advice is and how good it... But at some point I realized, no matter how great this advice is and how good it would be for my career and for my skills to follow this path and to continue working hands-on with production equipment for years, I was kind of gonna hate that path. It didn't sound enjoyable to me. One book has been the biggest help in realizing that there is no path to follow, that I need to make my own, and that's The Pathless Path by Paul Millard. In the book, Paul shares his own story of going from a burned out consultant to finding his own path and the lessons he learned along the way. And it's meant to make you reflect on your own path and challenge the expectation that you need to have everything figured out by 25 or that you need to achieve certain accomplishments to be a successful adult. The book is not for or against any specific path. It just challenges the idea that the default path is the only way. It's a great book if you don't know what you want in life or you think you might have been following someone else's dream. And if you want to feel less alone in this, you can kind of try on a different path through someone else's story. Kind of like a thought experiment to see if there's something there for you. Gosh, it's really cold out here. But now we're gonna do something just as cold. <laughs> oh no.
rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I have to confess something. I like to get in my own way. Whether that's through fear of failing, overthinking, being attached to things I don't really want, or worrying about irrational fears. Do you ever feel like you get in your own way? Be honest. Sometimes, then you and me both, we need this book. The mountain is you. <laughs> but like, that's actually the name of the book. The mountain is you by Brianna Wiest. It's basically a book about self-sabotage to recognize the ways in which we sabotage ourselves, get to the root cause of why we do it and resolve it for good. It's also about recognizing that you already have what you need to succeed. You don't need to rely on anyone else or a future version of you. Ask yourself, what would the ideal version of myself do? And then do that. You can already do that. I can already do that. <laughs> Imagine what we could achieve this year. This past week here on vacation, I've been reading a book that will go down in history as the book that's cured me of productivity culture, at least somewhat. But really, it's been blowing my mind. It's called 4,000 Weeks by Oliver Berkman because the average human lifespan is 4,000 weeks. But it's not about we only have 4,000 weeks, so we better make sure we make the most of that and hustle, hustle, hustle. It's not like that, no. On the back of the book it says, what if you stop trying to do everything? And I feel like that's a pretty good summary of the message of the book. It's about how our time is limited and we can't do everything we want or everything we feel like we should do. But that's actually a good thing because if we accept that it's not possible, then we can finally let go of those unrealistic expectations and stop trying to do everything. Instead, we can pick the few things that are most meaningful for us to work on. It's also about accepting that we cannot ever fully, truly control our time like productivity culture strives to do. There will always be traffic jams and technical disruptions and unexpected phone calls so we shouldn't live in a way where those things make us anxious, impatient or even angry. And certain things just take the time they take like reading a book or any creative process like writing or filmmaking. Instead of demanding that things fit into our schedules and move at our speed. We can develop patience and acceptance for the way things are. I don't know if a book has ever spoken to me as much as this one. I've had a problem with most popular productivity advice for a while now, but I couldn't really put it into words until now. Well, now I can. It makes me feel anxious. I like being ambitious and going after my goals, but I don't want to feel anxious about it. Why are we making ourselves so anxious? Now, I've also never liked the counter side of productivity culture. That's about taking it easy and just following the flow or something. I want to shape my life and go after things and use my time well, but I don't want to feel so much unnecessary pressure. I want to enjoy the process, enjoy the now, but also not force myself to enjoy the moment or live in the moment. And this book has opened up a whole third option between hustle till your haters ask if you're hiring and don't worry, be happy. I mean, it's not even really new what the book says, but it's just put together in a way that clicks for me. And it's definitely gonna play a role in changing my life this year. This last book I actually first read several years ago, but it has recently taken on a whole new meaning for me. 
The book is Essentialism by Greg McKeon and it's about doing less but better. Putting all of your energy into one thing instead of dividing it between many different things. What I was struggling with so far is I consider myself to be someone who has many ambitions and interests. I don't like to specialize in just one thing. That seems so boring to me. <laughs> As reading the book 4000 Weeks helped me realize I was still trying to do everything. I thought, sure, I should focus a bit, but everything is important. I don't want to drop anything. And I didn't make the connection that it's pointless because there's no way I can do everything I want to do. It just means that I will do nothing at the level that I want. The reason this is so important to me right now and speaking so clearly to me right now is that as I was reflecting on the past year, on 2023, and everything I did that year, I realized that I did a lot of different things, but I did hardly any of them with the consistency and to the standard that I would like, even though I put a lot of time and energy into them. There's only one thing to conclude from that. It's just not possible to do that many things well, and that's okay. Despite what standard productivity advice tells us, it's not meant to be possible. I don't need to optimize my calendar, time block, delegate, automate, whatever. I first of all need to make a choice. I need to pick the few things that are worth saying no to everything else. I have always rejected this idea because at first it feels like a loss. But somehow, as I reflected on last year and started planning this year, I thought, I wonder what I could achieve if I stopped doing most things and only focused on a few things. There's something really powerful about connecting these two books. 4,000 Weeks helps to motivate you to really make hard choices. It shows you a life philosophy to follow and allows you to finally let go of unrealistic expectations. And essentialism offers you the tools to narrow everything that you're interested in down to what really matters to you and then go after it. I'm probably going to talk about all of these books a lot more this year since there's just so much there that I'd like to dive deeper into, like finding your own path, building your career and embracing the limits of life, even as someone with many interests and ambitions. Yeah, I'm nowhere near done with these books. <gasps> How rude of me, I haven't offered you a fortune cookie yet.